Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan Zatarski. I'm the pharmacist here at MD Custom RX. In today's video, we will be discussing the benefits of hormone therapy as it relates to breast cancer. That may seem contradictory, but I will prove to you that bioidentical hormone therapy reduces breast cancer risk. In our country alone, every year, 40,000 people die because of breast cancer. I do believe that a lot of this could be prevented. And of course, prevention is the best medicine. Let me state one thing that is often overlooked. Bioidentical progesterone reduces the risk of breast cancer compared to no treatment. Let me say that one more time. Progesterone, bioidentical progesterone, not progestins, not synthetic progesterones, if that's a thing, but bioidentical progesterone. We compound that every day in our pharmacy. This has been studied to progesterone itself, has been studied and has shown a reduced risk of breast cancer in women compared to those that are not receiving any treatment. I will put a link to this study in the show notes below. If you would like to get more information on bioidentical hormone therapy, Dr. John Whitcomb from Brookfield Longevity here in Brookfield, Wisconsin, did a wonderful seminar in, back in 2014 on hormone therapy and breast cancer risk. I encourage anyone to look at that video. Again, I'll put a link below and you can learn more information about hormone therapy. In today's video, I will also be including information on dietary and supplement recommendations and how you can maximize your benefit if you're already taking hormone therapy from our pharmacy. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get into today's content. The two most important actions women can take in reducing breast cancer. Losing weight, because fat cells create estrogen. Estrogen creates fat cells. And I said that <laughs> it goes around and around. And it gets ugly, and that causes inflammation. So losing weight properly um, and balancing hormone levels. Those are the two most important things that a woman could do to reduce their uh, breast cancer risk. And if you, great book, uh, What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Breast Cancer by Dr. David Lee and Dr. David Zava, fantastic book. I would recommend anyone that uh, you know that either has had, well, or has any family history of breast cancer, even if they've had breast cancer already, they should still read that book. I'd argue you should test your, still, you could still test your hormone levels after chemotherapy or whatever treatment that you went through. What's your progesterone level? Because, okay, you, you don't have breast cancer anymore. Let's say it's been resolved, the chemotherapy worked, whatever treatment you did. I'm still worried about your bone health. I'm still worried about how your brain works. I, you know, all of those things. So just because you've gone through that doesn't mean you can't benefit from balancing out your hormones still. Or taking testosterone to improve your um, metabolism, and so on and so forth. 2002 study identified obese and overweight patients have lower response to standard chemotherapy and breast cancer treatment. I'm going to say that one more time. 2002 study identified obese and over, so just not, even just overweight. So your, your BMI, of, what is the definition of overweight? 20 per, your BMI over 20? 25? I don't, I can't remember where the cutoff is. So you don't even have to be obese, but just even overweight patients had a lower response to treatment. So losing weight can be very, very, very beneficial. Just if you go with standard therapy, not even, in my book, um, functional medicine therapy. <clears throat> I encourage you, if you're finding value in today's content, to give this video a thumbs up and also to share this information with someone you may know that is struggling to find information on hormone therapy as it relates to breast cancer. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, I encourage you to do so. It helps motivate me and to grow the channel and to bring more information that is out there on hormone replacement therapy and more specifically on compounded medication. Let's get back into today's video. Um, optimizing thyroid function, vitamin D, which again is actually a hormone. Balancing hormones can aid in improving patient outcomes using natural progesterone. Has the lowest risk of breast cancer. And there's this reference here actually, <clears throat> I'm gonna um, 
state as well that they looked at, and that going back to that women's health study, that even the synthetic progesterone was beneficial in breast cancer protection. And there's a little caveat to that I won't get into, but definitely using natural progesterone, or I should say bioidentical progesterone, has the lowest risk of breast cancer risk, which has a, a lower risk compared to no treatment. So just, like, oh, I don't want to do anything. Your risk is higher than the woman that actually does progesterone. Low luteal levels of progesterone in premenopausal women has been associated with increased risk of breast cancer. So going back to my menstrual cycle, your luteal phase, you can, you can, we have a, a test kit where you can, um, uh, menstrual cycle mapping, and I can't remember all the specifics to it. I don't know how often they, they test, but you actually basically do it. Uh, I think it's saliva. Don't quote me on that. Could be a blood spot. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Um, but you can measure a woman's menstrual cycle, and if their progesterone's not peaking up here like it should be, in my book, that's a problem. And so that's setting that patient up potentially for breast cancer down the road, whether it's a year from, the, from then or five years or 10 years or 20 years. This jump in progesterone on the back end of their menstrual cycle is cancer protective reduce your risk. So it's not like we always have to take hormones for everything. So um, increase fiber. Feed those. And then when I say increase fiber, you know, eat, um, don't take the same fiber. Don't just get a fiber capsule. Eat different plants and vegetables and that kind of thing that have different fibers because different bacteria feed on different fiber. So it's important to get a different variety of fibers in your diet. So cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. I always think of above ground vegetables, leafy greens, that kind of thing. Adequate intake of B vitamins, so metabolism. I see a lot of women that come in and they feel really good on the hormones for three to six months, and then they come in and then their, their hormones are off again. They, their, their hot flashes are back and they can't sleep again. And a lot of times it's just that because they're not pooping, they're not getting rid of their hormones, and they're recycling them through their GI tract. Monica has a whole talk on poop and hormones, um, but I think that might be on our YouTube channel somewhere. Um, and you need B vitamins to get rid of these hormones. So yeah, these chemical messenger signals are great, and I'm, you know, you're taking them every day or six out of seven days, but your body needs to metabolize all those hormones too. They eventually get to your liver, we gotta clean them out, and you need B vitamins to do that, you need magnesium, iodine, selenium. So make sure you're getting on a good multivitamin if you're starting hormone therapy, because you are gonna burn up all of these nutrients, and you might have a reserve now but again, typically in three to six months, you're going to start to feel crummy. And I've seen providers that are like, well, we're just going to give you some more. We're going to crank up the dose, you know. Your hot flashes are back. We're going to double down on estrogen. I'm like, no, don't do that. Give them some B vitamins. Give them some magnesium. Are they sleeping well? Are they pooping well? Because if they're not doing any of that, those hormones really aren't going to work that well. Uh, fill up on healthy fats. So when we're talking about receptors, these hormones have to dock somewhere. A lot of those receptors are made out of fatty acids and such, you know, just different compounds. And a lot of those compounds are coming from healthy fats, which I hate to say it, my, myself included, we're deficient in those omega-3s fatty acids. And so avocado, coconut oil, again, that's a saturated fat. I'm okay with that. Olive oil, nuts, seeds, reduce inflammation, boost immunity help inhibit tumor growth. I'm a huge fan of fish oil. I didn't put fish oil on there. Four, four grams of fish oil a day for most patients, if you want to write down a number. We have omega-3 testing here now for 75 bucks, and you can measure your omega-3 level. Just like you go to the doctor and they measure your A1C, and there's a percentage that your A1C should be below six or 5.5 or whatever. Um, so like with A1C, you want a low number. You don't want a lot of sugar on your red blood cells. That's what the A1C test is doing, is how sugar-coated are your red blood cells. With the omega-3 test, we want to see how much fish oil is wrapped around your red blood cell, and you want a high percentage. You want like 8% of your cell membrane of your red blood cell to be omega-3s. If you have more omega-3s, you have more fluidity, you have more cell-to-cell -cell communication, and a lot of patients are deficient in omega-3s. They might take one fish oil pill a day or two. That's typically not enough. I usually recommend starting out at four grams a day, which is a ton. But if you want to get to that therapeutic level, you got to take enough. So if you're taking ortho, ortho omega eight twenty. You want four capsules a day. I know, right? Yeah, 
Uh-huh. Yeah. Lower stress, we talked about this. Lower your blood sugar. Ask your doctor to do a fasting insulin level. If you're going to go in to do like a fasting cholesterol test, ask them beforehand that they can put a fasting insulin level on there as well too. Because this is a better, I shouldn't say better. I like this as a, as a test to see how much insulin you're cranking out. Because if you're cranking out, a, you can have a nice A1C and be, you know, he's not going to flag you, a he, she, that your doctor's not going to flag you as diabetic because your A1C is low enough. But I want to know how much insulin you're producing to get to that level. It's not always the same. One patient can be producing, I'm making up numbers here, but 10 units to get to that level. And the next patient could be producing 20 units of insulin to get that to that same A1C. So that patient that's producing twice as much, that's a problem because that insulin leads to inflammation, it leads to insulin resistance, and ultimately they're gonna end up potentially in, in more trouble than that person that's just producing a small amount of insulin. Yeah. Thank you for watching today's video. If you found value, again, in today's content, I encourage you to share this with a loved one or someone that you may know that is trying to find more information about bioidentical hormone therapy as it relates to breast cancer. Make sure when you are using bioidentical hormone therapy and, it, and if it's being compounded, to get that medication from a compounded pharmacy that's accredited. MD Customer X was the first accredited compounding pharmacy in the state of Wisconsin, and I very much pride ourselves on following standards that are above and beyond what is required from a state and federal level. Have a great night, and remember, quality matters. Thank you.